welcome to prayer during the day on Tuesday the 10th of November. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. We pray together. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory.
our psalm this morning is psalm number 21. The king puts his trust in the Lord. The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. How greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. Will you come to meet him with blessings of goodness and set a crown of pure gold upon his head? He asked of you life and you gave it him, length of days, for ever and ever. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity and will make him glad with joy in your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord because of the loving kindness of the Most High. He shall not be overthrown. Your hand shall mark down all your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land and their seed from among its inhabitants. Because they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform. You will put them to flight when you aim, when you aim your bow at their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. We will make music and sing of your power. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The King puts his trust in the Lord. Crown us, O God, but with humility, and robe us with compassion, that as you call us into the kingdom of your Son, we may strive to overcome all evil by the power of good, and so walk gently on the earth with you, our God, for ever. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand of his lords, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale, and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way, and his knees knocked together. The king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans and the diviners. And the king said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck, and rank third in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar became greatly terrified and his face turned pale, and his lords were perplexed. 
The queen, when she heard the discussion of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall. The queen said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts terrify you or your face grow pale. There is a man in your kingdom who is endowed with a spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans and diviners because an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Balthazar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we now reflect on that passage. This incident which gives us the phrase, the writing is on the wall, occurred when a new king, Belshazzar, was viceroy. Whereas Nebuchadnezzar had taken the secret temple vessels from Jerusalem, Belshazzar put them to profane use, acting blasphemously in Hebrew eyes by using Jewish sacred items to become drunk and offer libations to his idols. We can imagine the scene, candlelight flickering, suddenly a hand appearing, writing on the wall, appalled silence. Belshazzar was terrified. Verse six euphemistically implies he wet himself. In his fear, he promised the enormous reward of third place in the kingdom. As usual, the Babylonian wise men were stumped and Daniel was not on the scene. It was up to the queen, possibly Belshazzar's mother, and therefore with a longer memory, to come to the rescue. She referred to Daniel initially by his Hebrew name, perhaps thereby acknowledging the superiority of the God he served over the Babylonian deities. Above all, before describing his skills in interpreting dreams and solving riddles and problems, she referred to his excellent spirit and knowledge. His character was primary, and we were told in chapter one it was honed as a young exile who remained faithful to his God in training and then throughout his precarious existence in the court. His skills were useful, but it was his character that the queen noticed first. Amen. And now as members together of the body of Christ, let us pray to the true and living God. Heavenly Father, we pray for the nurture of each member of the church. We pray that our love for one another may show as we work for the coming of the kingdom. We pray today for the people and ministers of the Christian communities of the Diocese of Rumongi in Burundi, the Diocese of the Coast in Nigeria, and also the Diocese of Khoi in Nigeria. And in our own diocese, we pray today for the people and the ministers of the Y Benefice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of discernment, so that we recognise God's presence and reverence his face in the faces of those we meet. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We hold before you this morning our own Queen, all those who govern our country and make its laws. We ask that they may act responsibly and with compassion, attentive to real needs and to good values. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for our community, for all those who live in Tenterden, particularly today, all those people who live in East Cross, Oaks Road, Sandy Lane and Elmfield. We pray too for all those who work for the benefit of the children and young people of our communities particularly remembering the organisations that carry out that work. We pray for the Cubs, Scouts and Explorers and the Beavers of the Second Tenterden Scout Group and also for all the Rainbows, Brownies and Guides of the Tenterden Division. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we long for your healing. We pray for all those who at this time are in real need of knowing your love and your comfort with them. We ask you, Lord, to be today with Sue Harvey, Joe Coley, Jenny Jordan, Matthew Meredith, Muriel Davies, Peter Danks, Tony and Barbara Gorard, Monica Clinch, Amanda Chalmers, and all who are in need. And in a time of silence, we bring our own prayers for all these people and those on our own hearts before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have recently passed through death, remembering especially David Lumsden and Michael Douglas, and also Diane Parker and Frank Olihan on the anniversary of their death. We ask that you will judge them with mercy, so that made whole in your love, they may know the joy of your eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the salvation and restoration that is now possible for us through Christ's victory over death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Collect. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God grant to the world justice, truth and peace. Amen. <laughs>